Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Tellison, good afternoon. <laughs> and uh, to Renda, to your whole family, uh, welcome uh, and thank you uh, for your willingness to serve this country uh, in this important post. Uh, and I appreciate the frank conversation we had in my office uh, last week. And uh, I just want the American people to hear uh, some of the answers you gave me on, I think, some pressing and relevant questions uh, around your nomination and your views on the world, but in a focused way and on the record. Many of my colleagues have already asked uh, about how you will handle the transition from CEO of uh, the world's leading energy company, oil company, to Secretary of State advocating for human rights and open press and democracy. Uh, I've been encouraged to hear you say that we will stand by our NATO allies, that you would not support accepting uh, the annexation of Crimea by uh, Russia, and that you see Russia as currently an adversary and possibly an enemy. Uh, and I want to focus in on how you see Putin's leadership and Russia's role. Uh, you said previously that the Russians uh, are strategic thinkers and they have a plan. Uh, they have a plan to restore their role in the world order. Uh, my core concern is that their plan is actually to change the world order uh, and that they have used a wide range of tools uh, and we have not successfully pushed back on their campaign. Um, I led a bipartisan delegation to Eastern Europe uh, in August and was struck at the number of times in several countries we were briefed uh, on a continuous campaign to divide Europe and the United States, to undermine our NATO alliance, and to divide Europe from within, uh, and that Russia has used all the tools of state power, uh, both overt and covert, uh, to wage an aggressive propaganda campaign. Um, back in the 90s, after the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, we used effectively Radio Free Europe and the National Endowment for Democracy. Uh, we were engaged in a full-on fight for democracy in the former Warsaw Pact countries and former Soviet republics. Um, I think we should be using all of our tools uh, to push back on this Russian aggression. Um, do you see RT as a Russian propaganda outlet, and how would you use and lead the resources of the State Department to counter Russian propaganda and to push back on this effort to change the rules of the world order? Well, as you point out, um, utilizing the opportunity to communicate uh, to the people of Russia, you know, through mechanisms that were successful in the past, Radio Free Europe, uh, and utilizing those type of sources as well as providing information on the internet to the extent people can access uh, internet so that they they have availability to the facts, uh, the facts as they exist, uh, to all the alternative uh, reporting of events uh, that are presented uh, through the largely controlled media outlets inside of Moscow. Uh, that is an important uh, way in which to at least begin to inform the Russian people as to what the realities are uh, in the world. And it, it is an important tool that should be utilized. It is the intelligence community's assessment uh, that the Kremlin has a, a long-standing plan to undermine uh, the global democratic order that we spent so much time and effort building uh, in the decades since the Second World War. Um, will you rely on and will you encourage the president-elect to rely on um, the career professionals in the intelligence community in your role as Secretary of State if confirmed? Uh, Senator, I have enormous respect for the intelligence agencies and, and the, uh, the vital role that they play. So I will certainly be informed uh, by their findings. Uh, and I think in, uh, in terms of then understanding that as they apply to the facts on the ground, it's important in guiding our future uh, policies and, and guiding our future op options for uh, how to respond. I know this press conference has happened while you've been here in this confirmation hearing, but um, just uh, an hour or so ago, the president-elect uh, finally publicly said that he thinks it is most likely uh, true that Russia was behind a hacking effort. Uh, and he gave no more specific response to the question, what should we do about it, other than we will work something out. Uh, many of us are concerned um, about the lack of a clear embrace of a congressional role and a clear embrace of uh, congressional-led sanctions. Uh, there is a bipartisan bill that will move forward uh, to enact sanctions so that it's not just the action of one outgoing president. Uh, you've given some um, constructive answers previously about your view on sanctions and your view that uh, if done in a solid and sustainable uh, way, they can be a constructive tool of foreign policy. Uh, please reassure me uh, that you would welcome working closely with Congress on enacting sanctions against Russia in response to their 
um, war crimes in Syria, their invasion of Crimea and its occupation, and their attack on our democracy. Uh, if confirmed, Senator, I look forward to engaging with this entire committee, particularly on the construct of new sanctions. And I think, as I've indicated in response to other questions, uh, what I would hope is that uh, the executive branch uh, and in my role at, at the State Department, if confirmed, would be the latitude uh, to use those sanctions in efforts to cause modifications in Russia's uh, positions. Uh, if they're already in place and mandatory, uh, then it, it, that may remove some opportunities for us to explore ways in which we can use them as a tool uh, and, and give the Russian government the option of moving uh, because of the threat of those. Well, I will say, if I could, uh, Mr. Tillerson, that uh, I was a member of this committee when um, the current Secretary of State came and asked us not to strengthen sanctions uh, against Iran to give the executive branch the freedom to operate, and I think by a vote of 99 to 0, uh, the Senate went ahead with bipartisan sanctions. Senator Menendez uh, pressed you about this earlier. Um, I do think that uh, we should work in concert and in consultation, but uh, there are some tools that uh, Congress sometimes chooses to move forward with, uh, and it's my hope we could um, strengthen sanctions to show our determination uh, to contain Putin's aggression and to push back on his adversarial actions. Let me move to another topic, if I could. Uh, do you think it advances America's interests to have uh, the Russian military um, supporting Assad, um, coordinating uh, with Iran, and engaging in combat actions uh, in Syria against um, the moderate opposition and against uh, folks who we've relied on as allies in the fight against ISIS? As I indicated in my opening remarks, that is contrary to American interests. Um, how do you think we can um, strengthen our hand against Iran, um, given their destabilizing uh, regional actions? Uh, and in your view, as you reconsider the nuclear agreement with Iran, um, if we withdraw from the agreement unilaterally, um, how will we sustain the current level of uh, visibility we have into Iran's nuclear program, and how would that make us safer or stronger? With respect to the, uh, the recent agreement to limit Iran's ability to advance uh, or make progress towards development of a nuclear weapon, uh, if confirmed, my uh, recommendations, and I think this is consistent with what the President-elect is now, is to do a full review of that agreement as well as any number of side agreements that I understand are part of that, that agreement. Uh, examine what, you know, whether Iran and our ability to verify whether Iran is meeting its obligations under the agreement. Uh, and ensure that we are enforcing all the mechanisms available that hold them to that agreement. Uh, no one disagrees with the ultimate objective that Iran cannot have a nuclear weapon. The, the current agreement uh, does freeze their ability to progress, but it does not ultimately deny them the ability to have a, a nuclear weapon. My understanding is the current agreement, for instance, does not deny them the ability to purchase a nuclear weapon. It just means it just denies them the ability to develop one. So I think there are additional areas that have to be considered, and most importantly, if we choose to use this agreement as a way to, to provide an opportunity to discuss what comes next, because the real important question is what comes at the end of this agreement? And what comes at the end of this agreement must be a mechanism that does, in fact, deny Iran the ability to develop a nuclear weapon, and that means no uranium enrichment in Iran. Uh, no nuclear materials stored in Iran. And the other, the other side of that is what does Iran get would be through working with partners would be to provide Iran the, the access and the means to uh, peaceful uses of nuclear materials, uh, nuclear power, uh, medical, uh, uh, medical applications and industrial applications, but that would be done under a, a very uh, controlled process working with other partners to do that. Whether Iran is prepared to chart a pathway that looks like that, we'll, we'll only know once we engage in discussions. Well, many uh, members of this committee look forward to working with you to make sure that we are restraining uh, Iran's uh, nuclear ambitions effectively, uh, fiercely, and that we are implementing what we get out of that current agreement and reviewing it closely going forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.